Ulta One starts this week in Austin, Texas. If you've been in the title industry for some time, there's no doubt that you've heard of or attended one of the many conferences created by the American Land Title Association. Hi, this is Amanda from Prop Logics bringing you another Title Talks. I was able to catch Deidre Green, Director of Professional Development, and Lauren Dollarshell, Director of Meetings, in the middle of organizing one of the biggest events for title agents. They shared some important tips for first-timers, as well as veterans. Here's that interview. Hello. Hey, Amanda. It's Lauren and Deirdre. Hi, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Good. I'm sure you're super busy, so thank you so much for taking time to talk with me about Ulta One today. I really appreciate it. Sure thing. So before we get started, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Tell me what you do for Ulta One. Sure. My name is Lauren Dollarshell. I am Ulta's Director of Meetings. I oversee the entire conference from start to finish, foods, logistics, hotel space events, all of that kind of stuff. And then Deirdre? Sure. Um, I'm Deirdre Green. I'm Alta's Director of Professional Development. So in, with respect to Alta One, I do the breakout sessions. I do the content and work with the speakers and that kind of programming. Well, thank you again for being here. The first question I have for you is, for those who've never been to Alta One, how would you describe the conference? I think also one for us, I mean, it's our biggest event of the year. I think it might be the title and settlement industry's biggest event of the year. And it brings together people from all over the country to talk about the most timely and hot topics that we've got going on. Also one used to be Alta Annual Convention, which really had a different feel and a different energy to it. So in 2016, we actually debuted All to One with a fresh look on what it is to attend a conference and really the makeup of a conference and what a conference looks like. And so we really think a lot about everything from your arrival experience to the check-in experience, your interaction with all of the exhibitors. Um, you know, there's definitely a thought process to the way the exhibit hall is laid out and in two with the types of education we offer. We offer, you know, the more traditional lecture styles, keynote, one type speaker or a panel. And then we've also got engagement labs that are more interactive. They are meant to be more of a knowledge share between attendees, more so than someone standing up and speaking to you. So we do have what we call an also faculty member who leads those discussions, but they're meant to be more of a facilitator and someone who has a great knowledge or experience in that particular topic, not much more of these are my findings on this particular industry issue or something like that. But also one really is the place for big creative ideas, everyone to come together. We would also believe that together we are stronger, we're able to exchange information more and really use that. That to us is really making the industry stronger when we're coming together and sharing ideas. I've never been able to attend one, but I hopefully in the next year I'll be able to. But I know our, our team usually goes every year and they come back and they oh. say it's it's always a great experience. Are there specific sessions that you would suggest to people based on the attendees role in their company? Or perhaps are there even sessions that you would suggest to vendors that are there? I don't know if they're able to go to the breakouts and all that, how that works exactly. But how would you tell people to sort of navigate the schedule based on their role? Sure. Um, first of all, vendors are more than welcome to go to all events or all sessions. You know, we don't restrict that, um, so they're welcome at all. So we've divided the breakout sessions into tracks. I think we have six different tracks here, and I always tell people the tracks are a guide. You know, they're not set in stone, but it kind of helps categorize different sessions into buckets. But honestly, there's probably each session could probably fit into maybe two or three tracks. But we've got a commercial track, which is something we're really excited for because we're starting to do a lot more commercial-related content. You know, we have our commercial network in June, but, you know, so many fewer people in the business do it, but it's a very large part of the business. We're really trying to ramp up that kind of education that we have. And then we have an innovation and technology track that, you know, has digital closings and RON and different technology. So, you know, that could appeal to, I'm sure, a lot of vendors, but also people who are more focused on tech and strategy and that kind of a thing. And then we have a legal track. There's a data privacy session in there. I think there's a solar session in there, marijuana, 
been a huge issue. A lot of attorneys and compliance people, there's a rest of session. The other tracks we've got are operations, which is kind of wire fraud and the policy forms. And then we've got a sales and marketing track and a talent and culture track as well. So there's a little bit for everyone, we hope. Yeah, the, the idea is really, um, you know, if they're set on focusing on one particular topic the entire conference, you can. But really, we encourage for you to mix and match. Obviously, we understand some attendees are there to get their continuing education credit. But we don't think of also one as a one-size-fits-all event. When we're thinking about the education, it's with a broader lens than a narrow focus. So we try to vary that a lot. And especially one piece of the engagement lab that I think is an interesting side to it is because you're in, because it is so much more participatory and interactive, it's kind of a hidden networking yeah. opportunity within Alta One because it's not a typical, um, you know, let's go to a reception in the exhibit hall and, it, you know, there's a thousand people in there. And for some people, that's overwhelming. While the engagement lab, you're able to shine and get to know people in a different way. So where the room is more like going from a thousand to 30, you're able to interact. Or let's say you're a new first time attendee, you don't know anyone. That's a that's a great a great opportunity to get to know other people who are there at the conference and find a similarity. Or if you're an, you know, maybe more of an introvert and receptions of that size, like you're not always the most comfortable right off the bat. And so an engagement lab gives you that opportunity to get to know people in a smaller setting and kind of build your network. And I also think it's a really cool opportunity on the vendor side to show your knowledge and be considered in the eyes of agents and underwriters as a resource and not just someone who's there to sell them a product. You know, really go beyond that sales to client mentality and build a bigger, more like meaty type relationship where you guys are exchanging information with one another. I love that. That's a great thought. I never really thought about how the vendors could interact one-on-one -on -one like that in an engagement lab, but that's a great point that you make. And as someone who I really love learning about things and being in this industry, I feel like I've learned so much and I love sharing that knowledge. That sounds like something that I would really love and enjoy doing and connecting with people. Are there any specific sessions or engagement labs that you would say are like a can't miss this year? Oh, wow. Uh <laughs> It's hard for me to pick. It's like picking my favorite <laughs> child. I mean, we started in April internally, brainstorming and surveying the membership and everything. So we're really proud of all of the sessions. And I think the speakers are as well. So I, you know, hate to pick one over the other, but I will. <laughs> um, one, you know, we're, we have two members of the forms committee who are going to, I think mean, there's it's a chair and a vice chair of the forms committee who are going to give a session on the proposed ALTA policy forms. So, you know, that sort of touches everybody in the industry, the new versions of the owners and loan policy. So I think that one's incredibly timely. You know, marijuana has had tons of changes even recently. You know, that's a huge issue coming down the pipeline for our members. And then, you know, there's things that are non-technical. So there's a session that I'm really excited for, which is building your bench and the eight talents to look for in your next recruit. I think everybody in the industry is kind of dealing with a workforce pipeline issue and, you know, finding their next employees. And so I think that, you know, would have a great impact on people as well. So I honestly think they're all great across yeah, the board. Yeah. And I think there's something for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's, it is really tough because um, I, I was even just looking through the schedule and I was like, ah, oh, I, I mean, I really like this. I really like that. Um, what is also kind of a neat and unique offering that we started in 2016 when launched Alta One is what's called an encore session. So we allow in advance for attendees to vote on which sessions they would want to be repeated twice. And so they can, you know, let's say they weren't able to go to it 
the first time, they have the opportunity to go to it a second time. And that can be an engagement lab as well. It's not just restricted to a notable session. A couple of those that got nominated this year, one is actually in the commercial track, and it's... Oh, um, um, Keys to Success in a Commercial Transaction. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That was one. And then what was the other notable that got... Um, building Your Bench, which I had mentioned before, the eight talents. Um, to look for your next recruit. And then we actually had two engagement labs selected as encores again, or to be presented again, the redefine your customer experience, and then recruiting title employees from unexpected places. So there's so much, there's three other sessions offered at any given time. So it's hard to kind of navigate. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was looking at the schedule and there were a lot of uh, sessions going on that I thought, you know, coincided both sounded really interesting to me. So I can imagine it's tough to pick, but it seems like people are really interested in recruiting. And I know there's been a lot of talk about the silver tsunami. So that makes sense that people are concerned about finding talent. Would you, is there any specific advice that you would give to attendees if this is the first time that they're going to Alta One? Sure. Actually, our Director of Member Engagement, Taylor Spoladoro, does a really incredible job of reaching out to all first-time attendees. There's actually over 300 this time, which is incredible. She reaches out to all of them and gives them the option to hook up with an Alta ambassador, so someone who can be their resource before and during and hopefully after as well to navigate all to one and they're looking for someone to go to the opening ceremony with or the party in market one then we also do an orientation that tuesday as well where you get to sit down it's, it's all random um, you get to sit down at a table with a couple ambassadors and a couple other first-time attendees and ask questions to them as someone who's been going for several years, it's not an Alta staff member, so they can be as open and honest with that person about you know what they think is good or how to really figure out the conference and make the most of it. And it's, it's obviously people that we have known for a long time and who've been coming to the to our events for many years. And so I they just they really do an incredible job of reaching out in advance and making that person feel welcome. Yeah, I would say the number one thing is to go to that orientation on Tuesday. Yeah. Even if they don't have questions, just to meet other first timers like Lauren was saying, yeah. just find some people to navigate the week with. It may seem silly, but so when you go and check in, get your badge, we have ribbons that you can pick up and we have one that says first time attendee. I would encourage people to put it on because our ambassadors are looking out for you. They, you know, they want to talk to you and, and bring you into what has kind of always seems to be one very, very, very large reunion every year. And I think we just keep getting bigger and bigger as more people come and start attending and they get that feeling of acceptance. And I mean, it's always so loud the first night when everyone's there, you can, just because, you know, they're just so excited to see each other, but they're excited to see new faces. That's one thing that we want people who've never come to feel welcome and be a part of it. So our ambassadors who have been coming for many years, that is their number one role. And the thing that they want to do is make people feel welcome and really excited to be there. So, I, I mean, I can't say enough about our our volunteers. They actually... They, they do probably a better job than we do just because, you know, our focus is, is elsewhere with the program. So the, the orientation you said is Tuesday at what time? From 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock in Congressional B. B. And so are there any other special events like that uh, in addition to the orientation and that the typical keynote speakers and notable sessions and all that? We do a special happy hour for those who do commercial work. So that is Wednesday night at 530. We really want to grow that side and offer more education. So we do have a standalone meeting in June. They cover all things commercial and what kind of issues are affecting their business. The Omni sessions are obviously quite special. That's where the current board president will give their remarks for the year. Attendees will have the opportunity 
on Tuesday evening at the opening ceremony. That's the first opportunity for attendees to hear from our new CEO, Diane Tom. Her and Cynthia Blair, our board president, are going to do an interview on stage, and they're actually going to open up about the CEO search process and what about the job piqued her interest, the interview, the several interviews she went through, um, meeting the search committee here in D.C., down to the final candidates that got brought to Memphis, Tennessee, and did a presentation for our board. She'll talk about the presentation she gave to the board. She'll give a couple other very funny stories, um, random coincidences on her way down to Memphis. She actually herself once owned a small business, and so she's going to talk about that. And then all of her previous work history, she worked in the White House as well as HUD and Fannie Mae. It's an opportunity for attendees to hopefully get a chance to feel like they get to know her, even if they maybe don't get to talk to get her. To talk one to her. One. So um, we wanted to really bring her in and let you know let our membership you know as being as open and transparent about why the board chose the person that they chose and what her vision is for the industry and what she's really looking forward to accomplishing. A few other things to highlight that's kind of going on during the week, you know, up on the fifth floor of the hotel where ALTA's registration is, which we call HQ Live, it's kind of like headquarters for ALTA. We have a few other um, lounges, I yeah. guess I'd call them. There's um, the new attendee information lounge and It'll be staffed by some of our membership committee volunteers and the ambassadors that Lauren was talking about. It's not only for new attendees. If someone has a question about the website or a login or something, you know, anything also related, uh, committees, they can go there to ask questions or just kind of hang out. You know, there's always going to be someone there. Um, we also have our registry information center there, which, you know, the, the registry for title agents. So people can check and make sure their listing is up to date or if they're even in the registry, um, you know, we'll walk them through that process. And then finally, there's the Hands-On Consumer Education Center powered by our homeowner outreach program. And they will do one-on-one -on -one training for people on Alta Prints, which is some of our marketing materials that have been put together. They'll show people how to brand it different things there's you know they have some great topics on the website that they're prepared to talk about so just things to help attendees you know navigate ulta and make the most out of their membership and then the last thing i'll mention on tuesday tlta is hosting a welcome to austin music lounge they are so excited to welcome people to texas so they are going to have rotating local musicians on Tuesday afternoon, as well as provide some Texas libations. They're going to have these kiosks there in their lounge area where an attendee can walk up and answer some questions about their preferences, likes and dislikes, and it will actually put together a suggested things to do in downtown Austin, which I think is really cool. It kind of opens up the opportunities that a city like Austin has. Awesome. Well, shout out to TLTA and yeah. their, their hospitality. That's great. Is there anything that you personally are looking forward to exploring about Austin? Have you had a chance to to look at any of those uh, sort of things yet? Or are you just been totally um, swamped with planning for Alta One? Uh, you know, I mean, so we throw on Friday night, it's called Alta Unplugged. It's a bar on Rainy Street. Rainy has become a really popular destination in downtown Austin. It actually used to be a, a it's like two streets long of these sort of abandoned little houses, and they um, the city came in and redeveloped it to these really cool, unique bars. So we'll be at Bangers on Friday night, which will be awesome. So that's a great place to go to. I mean, without a doubt, yeah, the night the, like the night events are fun for a week. It feels like we really get the chance to take over a city in a hotel and uh, there's always people, you know, in the lobby. This hotel in particular has got a great, huge lobby bar with live music every night. Um, they have another bar upstairs on the seventh floor that has got huge outdoor patio area. The pool is, in, um, is incredible. So there's a lot of fun places for people to, you know, to see each other. And then with also Austin not being a huge downtown, you know, if you walk over to 6th Street, which is a very popular area with bars and restaurants, 
or a rainy street, you are, yeah, I have no doubt you will see tons of other Altawan attendees. For those of us who can't make it to the conference this year, is there a way that we can keep up with the topics being discussed? Yeah, and um, there are a few opportunities. We are very active on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, Instagram in particular, while we're on site. So follow all of our handles and you'll get to see all the fun going on. Um, and then we are going to have some live stream available. So. Yeah, all of the Omni sessions will be streamed on Facebook uh, until it gets to the paid keynote speaker. But people will have the opportunity to um, get to see Cynthia and Diane's interview. Also, we give out several industry awards during some of our Omni mm -hmm. sessions. So those will be streamed, including the title webbies. The R Values Award um, will will honor and acknowledge our national title professionals. We'll um, you know we'll stream the board installation on Friday, which will be followed by Mary O'Donnell's speech. So she'll be the newly appointed board president. So we'll hear from her and her outlook for the coming year. We have a, lo a local spotlight on a couple wire fraud victims who are, two of them are detectives who worked a case there in Austin and another actually is a realtor. They're gonna come and during the beginning of the Omni session on Thursday and they're gonna actually talk, the detectives are gonna talk about how they recovered the money from this wire fraud scheme, the processes that they would suggest if this happens to you, the things to have in place to help prevent this kind of thing. And then the realtor is actually going to talk about what happened and how to work better with your realtor partner. I, I know that Alta provides a lot of great resources for settlement agents across the country. Is there any other upcoming events or special, you know, are there webinars or boot camps or anything that you want to mention to let people know about to mark their calendars? Yeah. So we are actually teaming up with the Mortgage Bankers Association for a series of digital boot camps next year. They'll be one in December of this year, and then April and August of next year. It's going to be a full day of intensive education, very focused on you know what it's gonna to take to get to digital closings and e-mortgage. Another offering that we have, which is in early spring of next year, it's called Alta Springboard. That is really a unique conference of ours that has grown to be, really has its own following, which is very cool to see. The concept behind Alta Springboard is that the education that is presented and given is completely peer-to-peer. -peer. We narrow down like three kind of industry challenges or opportunities facing the industry at that time. And... We'll do what we call ideas festivals on those. And then within that, there's kind of a couple subcategories that we identify and attendees can opt into those different subcategories. And then they have more of roundtable conversations to talk through you know, various issues that they're maybe seeing in their region. Another cool part of Springboard is that we have got a concept called brain dating. So it's kind of, um, think of it a little bit like app dating. Whereas you, um, you create a profile as an attendee and then you can post things that you want to learn or you could teach someone else. And then people sign up to have brain dates with you. And there's also group brain dates. So a lot of it really is this knowledge exchange between attendees with some focus too on career advancement talks. And those are anything from how to be a leader when you're not the boss, how to work remotely or how to work with an employee who is remote. That's awesome. For people who are listening and work in the title industry, but might not be an Ulta member, what would you say are some of the benefits of becoming one? We put out so much education for the industry, everything from regulatory to talent and recruitment. I think one thing that the association has really wanted to do is you know, we do know that a lot of the majority of our membership are small, you know, small businesses where they have four and five employees in their office. And so sometimes creating collateral, like marketing collateral, they don't feel like they have the time to do that or the energy to do that or they don't know where to start. So Alta's actually done that work for them. 
So that's a big part of the homeowner outreach program that is a free member benefit. The new compensation index is really neat and incredible. That just got launched. I mean, uh, constant, you know, kind of news feeds of policies and things like that that can affect the industry. Opportunity to serve on committees, you know, really be plugged into everything happening in the industry. The Alta Marketplace is another neat thing that we launched last year at Alta One. So the Marketplace was created to help our members shop for different software or maybe it's like HR things or, you know, things for their business or company or something like that. We created a place where they can go and actually see information out there where these companies are vetted. And let's just say you're you're looking for one particular pillar of best practice. You can actually narrow down the search and find a list of associate members that we have that provide that service. The hottest topic this year for us was cybersecurity and wire fraud. So um, our information security committee put together a wire fraud rapid response plan that is available and free to anyone who is a member. If and when that happens, you have right there at your fingertips what to do. If you were thinking about coming to Alta One and haven't yet, still feel free to come and join us. There's we still um, There is still time. We're, you know, on-site registration is not a problem. We want as many industry professionals there because when we're, you know, when we're together and sharing information, really that makes us stronger makes the industry stronger for years to come. Thanks again to Deidre and Lauren. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. There really is something for everyone at Alta One, and it's obvious that there's a strong passion for education and connection. Be sure to check out the links to follow Alta One on social media during the conference and to see the live streams of sessions. If you want to learn more about becoming a member of the American Land Title Association, go to alta.org backslash membership. And if you want to keep getting great content like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening and happy closing.